All right, so here's the plan with where we're at right now. I want to... Why does Suna the Programmer have a godly logic check? Oh, I think I remember why now, because I wanted to look at the file that Everart gave me. You take the legal documents out Crap. of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the... Can I... Can I just fucking have someone else sign this? Can I, like, fake a signature? What about those drunks? I'm gonna go ask the drunks. Hey, can you sign this as a joke? That actually might- that actually might be a good idea. That actually might work. Nope. How about you? He's back. Shit. Darn call. This. Okay. Well, that's not working. All right. Because I, I kind of... So, considering that things are starting to get to a head, I'm a little bit frightened that I... I okay. I want my gun back. I, I want my gun back. All right, how do the I... The yellow mill, but the documents inside the envelope still lack the required signatures. It's not going to be that easy. We need to dirty our hands with the signatures. I assume that's the goal here. Eh. You said dirty our hands with the signatures. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't... Your mind just flips back and forth, does it? Huh. I see Lillian's name. I've seen... Then... She speaks with your... God damn it. Hey, dude. Sign my sign my the petition. Sons. We okay. So now it's a pirate's life for me. God damn it! Fishing village down the coast to sign Everett's document. Ah, and I I don't have the logic check. How much XP do I need? Okay, here's the plan. I'm going to attempt to level up logic one more time in order to get the damn signature going because I I really want my gun back and I feel like I have to go through Everett to get my gun. I feel like I, I genuinely need to get through Everard. So we need more XP. In order, we need more XP. Because if we need more XP, um, we need to do a couple things. Uh, we're screwed on the insect case. The murder weapon is looking a working firearm that shoots ammo. I don't know about that one. Sing karaoke. Oh, right. There's the karaoke thing. And then there's the ruby part, which is very difficult. How to get more XP. How to get more XP. How to get more XP. Okay. Um... All right. You know what? The way I'm gonna do more XP is just a bunch of bunch more white checks. Let's go do uh, a logic thing for Suna, uh, which involves changing my clothes into more logic, which involves that hat. Okay, yeah, plus three logic. Let's go. We're we're a god of logic now. I'm so mad I can't level it up any higher. Yes, what is it? Form a theory on the okay, we're forming a theory. All you hear is God damn it. An attempt was made. Alright. Other white checks. There's the barred door in the other place. Uh Gaston with his with his sandwich. The wash basin and the fisherman's shed. That's for cutting. And then. Oh dear. We're going to the Martinez waterfront. Hey, Gaston, are you still sad or can I ask for your sandwich now? Oh, sorry. He's still sad. I don't want to ask for a sandwich. His friend just died. I don't want to ask for his sandwich. I don't want to do that. All 
All right, I'm going this way. Oh, oh, Kim, Kim's gonna ask me to tip, put my flashlight on. I know what you're gonna yell about, Kim. Hmm. All right, this is the wall. Is this the wall that I have to check for? Your flashlight, some of the writing, the handwriting, the full text read outside. Oh, this, this is all the party the stuff. Will be a pin po nah, that's fine. We don't need that. Oh, hi, Kim. What's up? Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Remains as soon as Radio Game Studio Fortress accident. Yes, I got that. Yes. What I meant was, what were they trying to achieve with this damn game? They are having fun. What were their ambitions? Because this here looks rather advanced. It's a deal. Have respect and curiosity for this failed endeavor. This is way above your tiny little policeman head. <laughs> oh my god, that was a horrible failure. Okay, well, I think. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world... Literally just in talking game. about a, an online, online D&D campaign. campaign. Then there's the Game Master Frequency <laughs> that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories. Functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into subfrequent. Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. The other areas of the world. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role playing Indeed. game? Those yes. Wilkins are dead. No idea. They stopped feeling. Indeed. It's All right. issues and untethered from reality, but... Hmm. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Oh, I wanted to finish the... I thought there was a quest to okay. finish the Let's entire see. game, which would have been pretty great. Alright, is this the other map wall that I can look this at? old fire a diagram for summoning radio frequent unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system. You think so? Looks no, like this is this is uh, the, oh, I already talked the about this stuff. All right, we're good. We're good. There's my god, it's as if the less money they have. Oh, I got wait, I got a, I got a logic success. Oh crap, wait, it is the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Exactly, love it. This schedule, no, right, it's fine. It's fine. I don't need to worry about this stuff right now. I'm just, I'm just going through these areas real quick because we've already been here. Wait, what was the Map wall, wash basin. Wait, what is the the check I'm seeing? Okay, I don't know why that doesn't like me doing that, but it doesn't like me rolling that up. I have to scroll like hor horribly. What is the the bar door it says it's in here? Oh, no. Is it just throwing me? Hmm. Wait, hold on. I want to go. I want to go check out this part again. I mean, we already looked at it, but I'm curious. A few bricks have fallen off. Seems like an old bunker. It means there. He likes this. Ah, crap. I don't know where the barred door is. The one with the physical instrument check. I thought we already did that check by smashing into the door. Yeah, that's the, hmm, bizarre. Flashlight gaming. Boombox gaming. No, not boombox gaming. All right. Oh, well, uh, maybe the map wall is, I thought that was the map wall. I think I'm just going crazy.
Just an ordinary wall. Nope, that's the other wall. Just an ordinary wall, it says, directly to my face. Ah, uh, I don't think I have any way to level up. Wait, oh, oh, shit, she's gone. Went to the village on the coast, officer. See you there. Oh, she's at the fisherman shacks now? Oh, goddamn. Well, hmm. Wait, I want to check something about my, uh... It's the ledger you found in the... It takes about half an hour. Not oh. much. It's without resistance or sound. Hulk. I'm not... No, 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 wrong thing. Wrong thing. There it is. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. I really want my gun back. I don't even know if Everard's gonna help me get the gun back. He could just be giving me, like, all kinds of problems, but... I don't know. So are you over here? Holy shit, yeah, there she is! Hey, Joyce! What's up? I'll just keep the Cordelachi in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. She winds the mooring line around the post. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to appear any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Oh, Joyce. Hello, detectives. You doofus. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. Hmm. How do I like it? Slush man of cinder blocks construction work half left, half finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of etonite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune, with a smell of salt and dog shit in the background. Beautiful. It's pornographically poor. The street <laughs> has no name, all the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? <laughs> I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. Real men. Real politics. Real thoughts in your head. <laughs> You're in no danger, Whisper. The working class has no idea, have no idea what's happening to them. That they don't. One dollar! Ultra-liberalism wins again. Above you, there forms a quilt of alto-cumulus clouds, twisting into each other. The wind tugs and stretches them over the bay. Their cloud shadows slide over the ruins of Revachol West. Wherever they pass, the temperature drops slightly, but perceptibly. It's early spring, and the rains are coming. An officer enters a low hut of stone and wood. Inside, weapons are piled against the walls. Rifles with splintering stocks, and swords. Tens, if not hundreds. They're antiques, says Lieutenant John the archetype McCoy to his partner. They're digging them up from the catacombs now, fixing them. Old caches from the revolution. The children carry them up. Come May, the streets the children? Will be flooded. Outside, the wind rattles the loose hatches, flooded with cheap weapons oh, and no. angry hands. Have I told you how they discovered this place? No, the fishing village? No. The Insul Indian, Isola. No, I have not. You have well, not. Your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. Oh, yikes. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. Oblivion. That's so me. I knew you would sympathize. <laughs> most Revisholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. 
or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, right. how can I assist you in this new location? Well, tell me now. We have time. Do we? Yes. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. This story she will tell only before she leaves Martinez at the very end of her stay. Yeah, if I live, I feel like there's a solid chance I just fucking die. So I'm not sure about this one. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with while you're hot in pursuit. No, not really. Apparently not. Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. Oof. The wind is turning southeast. Well, you know what? We have to just we ha we have to just uh, kill kill time. It would appear, and in order to kill time. Uh, we, uh, we need to, you know what? I'm going to go talk on the phone. I'm going to go call a random number again. That's, that, that's always been helpful for killing time. You pick up the handset. There's a tone. The machine is up. Calling. Still calling. Again? Seriously. Yes. Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. <laughs> Gerard, what a douche name. Change it. Change your name. What are you, like five? So in the background, when the Gerard speaks again, his voice is hushed. Thanks for calling, asshole. Phone hanging up. Disconnect tone. Again. Calling. <laughs> calling. Calling. Still calling. Still calling. Stop calling me, man. And just slightly hysterical. I'll get you your money, all right? I just need to tonight. Let me work. <laughs> I want this delivered to the whirling in rags and martinets. You're not Tethys. Screw you and don't ever call here again. <laughs> You're fucking with some serious people. Disconnect tone. <clears throat> the lieutenant is ready to move on now. Is he? Calling. I'm not. I'm tired. Past this time, it's ho voice is hoarse from cigarettes. You're typing in the background. Sounds like he hasn't talked to anyone in quite a while. What are you tired of? Right. I hate writing so much, but I have to get back to it. The man disappears with a sigh. You do not hear the customary disconnect tone, just silence in the handset. That's definitely the a developer. Is still waiting for you to dial a number. I bet that's a dev. Seems like it did not have time to swallow the coin. This sometimes happens. Lucky you. The call went too fast for the payphone to register. You can still make a new one without paying. You Holy hell! Eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial, then pull down on the number, then move one up, and repeat the motion twice. Strange. This is not how you started before. Keep dialing. Four one four 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 seven. Keep dialing. One 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 seven three six one. Your fingers keep moving like a spider. Every time the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal, like a bell tolling. Yes, 451-67-451. You are going deeper now, into some unknown place, far away from this island of matter and its telecommunication networks. What? 451. You have dialed God knows how many numbers. The headset has been waiting silently to relay a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think. But it does. A connection. An ultra-long distance call. Your air fills with a crackle. The wash of a strange ocean full of white noise. 
a little bird starts ringing in there, not like the local calling tone before. No, a small ring in the cage of distortion. Far away, a distant network of phones calling, calling in the night. The saddest sound in the world. Both pitiful and terrifying, you feel your pulse rising with each ring. Calling still, ringing by the bedside of a dark but capacious apartment with long windows. Oh no. You know this to be true. Oh no. The handset starts slipping from your sweaty palm. Your breathing is heavy. I have a nine volition and it's this difficult. Long windows, how do I know that? You just do. Oh no. And you know it is going to hurt. Kim? The lieutenant is too far away to hear your yelp. The sea wind blows. Oh no. Who am I calling? You can't. Some strange force is keeping the headset glued to your hand. Your ear listening to the ring in the speaker. Calling. 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 Calling still. Then the ocean breaks. Out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges. Oh no. Small. The dearest thing you've ever heard. Hello? Hello? Mm. Who is this? I want to die! Who is this? Dora. Who is this? The connection is bad. Dora. The name feels like a gift. A gift that was meant for you. To make it possible to live. And fight. In the distorted distance, oh. you hear someone turning next to her. Oh. Bed springs rattle. Don't react. Whatever you do, don't react to that last thing. Oh, no. Don't react. It doesn't matter if you react or not. You still think you hear a man's voice in the background. It's covered in pain and white noise. I want to die. Your voice makes you want to turn to dust. Is that you? Uh-oh. No, no. It's you, isn't it? That's you. I'm a revolutionary servant of humanity. I will free mankind and abolish the classes. I will raise the dead. You're not a revolutionary, Harry. You're drunk. Oh, no. I'm not drunk. Hey. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. Can I actually call my ex by just randomly constantly dying, dialing on the payphone? Where are you going in two hours? To work. Where? The academy, where I work. That sounds better than my job. I'm happy. No response, oh. only a sigh. The connection crackles like burning paper. What are you doing to yourself right now? <laughs> Catastrophic damage. You need to stop, Harry. You'll die. Yeah, but I want to know more. I'm in my rover, sleeping. You want to talk about me? Who am I? What do you want to talk about that we haven't talked about already? Oh my god. Oh, it's so much more real than I thought it would be. This is bad. You feel your right hand on the handset cramping up with pain. Is someone there with you? Yes. Oh, I, I, I'm hanging up. Hand isn't moving. The headset hisses in your ear with evil sadness. Right now, I'm going to give you one chance. Push the headset in the cradle with all the strength you have. Smash the headset in the cradle. The cord dangles in the wind like a sickening worm. <sighs> you dial the number again. 
26 <laughs> pulls of the rotary dial. The machine speaks the coin, and a terrifying ocean of distance rustles in your ear. In the middle of it, a familiar ring. Small, distorted, calling, calling. Put it down before it's too late, please. The headset lands in the cradle with a clank. Now walk away. Forget about this. Walk away and do police work. Bury this in yourself and move on. I'm sorry, I had to. It was funny. Uh, wow, okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna talk about it in a second after I get this thought internalized. Motorway south. The lone vector stretches in your mind's eye into the wild pale yonder for an unimaginable distance, forgetting, forgetting, until you can no longer remember anything. No cities, no mountains, no oceans, and finally, no vector. Nothing remains. A blank space with no point of reference, where only one type of motion is possible. The motion of a human throat swallowing, and then it comes to you. To reach the end of the motorway south is to be unborn. You've had this thought before, while aimlessly wandering the streets of Jamrock. A lost piece of the man you were. A dark hope. The pale is a wild idea. All intellect white checks unlock. Yes! Plus one inland empire. The swallowing motion. Holy. Holy, that's so many intellect options. Wow, that was so lucky I chose that. I am in a grave deal. Oh, I, I can, I can call my, I can call a phone to death. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A twelve. There is yes. Sorry, sorry, is sorry. The current residents are going to lose. Not sorry. Yes. Pipe. Okay, there's no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access, and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. I mean, that kind of sucks, but that, that's what happens when you build a, a structure. What are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it will probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. Oh, that's why. Wait, sell their property for cheap? What fucking property? There's three shacks. Of course, I should have seen it. Eval probably has eyes on us, but if the second signature were to be somehow wrong... Huh? He won't say it outright, but he's suggesting forgery. That's what I suggested! Forgery, yes. It would render the document invalid. It's not the sort of act I would normally encourage, but under the circumstances, if done discreetly, it may be the only way to save what's left of the village. You probably don't have a pen. Here, you can keep this. Or you could try to trick Everard. Get someone random to sign the document. By the time the union boss finds out, your business here will already be concluded. That is a serious check right there. Everard's people could be watching you here. I wonder if I need to find like a very specific spot. Maybe the church. Maybe the church will do it. I mean, okay, I, I guess like... So yeah, so the idea is that Everard's trying to get people to sell their property for cheap so he can take it over by annoying them with the, the noise. But like, what property is there to sell? These fishing shacks? Who's even living here? You take the legal documents out of the end. Oh, God damn it. Yes, what is it? All you hear is.
<laughs> God damn it. You know the saddest part about this whole thing is? I'm not gonna re be able to retry the dance check. Oh yeah, Kim. Yes? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. Oh. They sent you to slight precinct 57. That can't be right. Just think about it for a second. Damn. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late and argues with his necktie. You weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck up, like as a joke? I've considered it. Oh. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Ha! So you are their finest. I am the finest of nothing. No. Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. <laughs> Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they Yay! Did, they are in for a surprise. He's right. There are no airtight theories. What a nice thing for him to say. All right, we, we suggested forgery. I'm gonna go talk to the drunks again. I'm positive they can forge this. Come on, buddy, forge this document for me. Tequila. Let's go, I was right the whole time. What's it about? Uh, I'll let my hand address the situation. Maybe you've heard. I used to be a very successful business. Ah, uh, whatever, here. All right. Can I have the pen back? Don't know if I've mentioned it, <laughs> but I used to be a businessman. Oh my god. No, that was my favorite thing of all the things you have. This had better be worth losing the pen for. I lost the pen! Hey guys, I'm a hero. Oh my. Hell yes! The incapacitated drunk. Thank you for your help. Should we go and mail this? Yes. We've done it. We've got the signature, baby. And I lost my pen. Which I'm pretty upset about. I, I'm, I'm mad about losing the pen. Uh, Kim, I'm sorry I'm wearing this hat, buddy. I, it, it gives me extra logic, and that's the biggest issue I'm currently facing, so... I apologize. But, like, you gotta do what you gotta do. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. I knew we'd get to use this mailbox for something. Kicking? Hey! You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail as collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug, Everard. You know he's going to play you somehow. All right, let's go back to Everard. Everard, I please actually have my gun. I... I don't know if Mr. Everard is in fact... is in fact finding my gun. I don't know. I don't think he is, but as far as I know, he could be. I... I don't have my gun. I need my gun. Wait a minute. What if I told him about the light bending guy? Have I told him about the light bending guy? I think I have, haven't I? This is not a fishing rod, is it? Is it? Mr. Dubois, every worker. For himself. The extra money would be nice, but we'll do it. We'll just we'll appease him. That's right, Mr. Dubois. I see the socialist democratic fervor now burns in your heart too. 
How can I help you today? Mr. Dumois, have you come to look at my mega milkers? I did it, Ever. I made it sh even shadier. What? The brew. Oh, how could I forget your little side project? Well done, Harry. Well done. Don't even tell me what it was. But good job. I love it when workers take the initiative like this. So do I. That's one tasty brew. You should drink some right now, if you can. Have you heard about the horseback being renovated? Ah, yes. I was informed. It seems to be a big undertaking. What are you hoping to achieve with it exactly? I have to do the ultra liberal thing. I want the people that's trying to understand my net worth. Interesting. Oh, uh, what? Small the money? Waiting to be claimed. Always exciting to see promising businessmen rise up through the chaff. I'm glad to see you making headway with your endeavors, Mr. Dubois. I look forward to seeing the end result. Is there anything else on your mind? I just finished investigating the local drug trade. Ah, yes. Your side investigation. Thank you. You've got some spirit clearing up phony drag accusations alongside this murder. <laughs> I'll talk to the mayor and see if I can get you the key to the city, Harry. Now let's talk real business. Fuck you. Not even a speck of anger in his voice. That's that then. Remember the container I asked you about? Turns out there's a mega rich light bending guy inside. Mega rich light bending guy? Oh my god. How did that get in there? He's taking the piss. He's so rich you could get in anywhere. Damn it to hell, Harry. I specifically told my guys to check all the containers for mega rich light bending guys. Kim, tell him. There was a guy in the container, but he didn't bend any light. That was in the detective's head. What? Honestly, guys, we might be moving all kinds of suspicious things through this harbor, but I won't be caught transporting the light bending mega rich. I have a reputation to protect. <laughs> the mega rich are people too. He was a nice man, gave me stock tips. No, they're not. They're vermin and one just found a way inside my container. <laughs> Soon he'll bring the others. All three of them. Thank you for <laughs> telling me. I'll see to this immediately. All three of them. <laughs> I shudder to think what you're going to tell me next, Harry. God damn it. I mailed the signatures, god damn it. The golden boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. Oh, level You've up. done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a bright future, and you've proven yourself someone I can trust. Someone I can really do business with. Oh, I'm a gun. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing is off the table. Judging from how happy he is, it looks like you did it. He doesn't appear to suspect trickery. Can I get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. You bastard. Your gun is with an old woman. I hear she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy. The one he described as terrifying. It's like, is it the pale woman? Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway. He actually did help me find my gun. Union boy's gonna help you fix it. He winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Wait. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. What? <laughs> waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None Wait, this is this the, is this like the cleaning lady? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. Is this the... There it is again. The pigs. Like Roy said, not good at all. I for one find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. God damn it, Kim. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. She's waving around As people. I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. It sounds like a very disturbed and desperate individual. I already have. 
Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would oh, never my set God. you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. My guy. Now, okay. back to the fun stuff. She will be there from 2200 hours till 0200 hours. More fun stuff. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. I know you plan to force them out with construction noise. Harry, by now you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access makes some people consider moving, well, let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' palaces. So the village is doomed. You were there. You saw the place. A wasteland. There's nothing left. But mark my words, officers. We are going to reset it. Reset. I have big plans for Martin A's. And they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. I, am I... Am I the... It doesn't sound bad. It was like a ghetto. Harry, imagine a youth center supermarket church complex. What? Employing hundreds, no, thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low income housing. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. <laughs> this is the problem with, with Evrar, is that like, this sounds good. I can't tell if he's fucking with me. I genuinely can't tell if he's telling the truth. If he's telling the truth, then like, all right, like it is a fucking ghetto. It's like a, it's a bunch of shit shacks. It's probably not the worst idea, but he's so scummy. I don't know if he's telling me the truth. Yes, I do. I got the center. I got room for a retail complex. And in four years, I'll get the church too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. It cannot go on. I agree, but... There is true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things, and even a touch of pain. The pain is true. He's seen kids do worse than that. Ah, it's... Ah, it's... All right. Oh, I do, Harry. I really do. I'm going to make the working man richer than Joyce Messier with that vote of yours. That's my job. Just like yours is to keep the peace. A true flash of anger in him as he thinks of her. Oh yeah, they're polar opposites. Did you order the hangman killed? Order it? You know my men didn't kill him. They told you. <laughs> it was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had to do it myself. And I'm too fat for that. Why are you so fat? I'm glad you asked. I've got type 2 diabetes because sugar and fat was all my mother had to give me and my brother Edgar when we were kids. Oh. Good job too, as it made me ugly. And ugly people, Harry, are much better at politics. Oh. That is true. People don't trust pretty people. No, I, I disagree on that one. I dis I disagree on that one. I I I I think we got that one backwards. What you gave him being dead. Why a war, of course. Oh. And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. The trained military people. Aren't you afraid for your men? Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1. And that's just Martin Ames. With all the unions in Rebeshaw, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men. Or 15 men. 
or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. Except everyone hates them, except ultra-liberals maybe, which happens to be me. You're not an ultra-liberal, Harry. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Don't be a retard. <laughs> I didn't expect to hear that. <laughs> I do. Holy shit. Okay. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Claire. Harry, there is no strike, only war, class war, or in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait. <sighs> is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. Press X to doubt. Please. So that's why you haven't met Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gormont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her asshole. She has no chance. What the fuck? Tits from her asshole. It's a local saying. Okay. Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, um. it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. It's already happening. Who killed the hangman? No man? idea. Oh. Could have been his own mother for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him a big fat kiss from Everard Clare. Couldn't have done it without him. The guy, huh? I don't. I told you it could have been his own mother. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the Union. Maybe it was the mob. Or maybe he killed himself because he was a closet socialist. <laughs> Truth is, I simply don't know. Okay, you know, I gotta be honest, Everard Claire has grown on me pretty quick. I actually am starting to really like this guy as a character. He's a shitter, and I can't tell if he truly has the best, uh, the best plans for everybody, but god damn it, is he a funny character. 2,372. Plus yours truly, of course. And they're all well motivated. At least the ones you've seen. Like, he could be 100% genuine with me right now. Genuinely wanting the best for the people and everything. And I'd say, damn, that's pretty impressive. But you're still kind of a shithead. Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The, poo -poo. the clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. Everything? We've been running back channel negotiations with all the major clients. I think the company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold, exotic new revenue streams. That's drugs. <laughs> Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsuragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samarin Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. What? All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. Yeah. The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad. Has bad optics. May be illegal in some countries. <laughs> the Debardas Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. We're gonna transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. So your sick kid can get his benefit and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off Risperazol. And the kids on the street can get speed and pyrolidon. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. 
I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the Union took a fantastic share, and I'd keep that stuff far away from Martinez. I don't not believe him. I think he's actually being honest. I think he's like, yeah, I'm gonna drug, tra I'm gonna traffic drugs, and it's gonna make uh, it's gonna make the the average worker here extremely uh, live a really good life. But I'm gonna do it by trafficking drugs, and I'm like, eh. I don't know. I kind of believe him. He's such a bizarre guy. Is Ruby helping you secure this share? Harry, if I was supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. Hand this to it. I suppose I'm a murder. You know why you're such a good detective, Harry. You don't get sidetracked. Some systems that may or may not be unethical. <laughs> sure. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbor's turnover, just like the harbor is, but a small part of Martinez. So is there a drug trade or isn't there? Let's look at the big picture. Martinez as a whole, there are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth and everyone's going to pull their weight. Okay, comrade. Let's keep focusing on the drug trade. He was almost admitting to it. No, no, Harry. That's boring. All right, it's gone. The hypothetical raw materials trade is off the table. It's such a small and insignificant slice of revenue, I'm cutting it. Boys. Harry felt queasy about it. We're not doing it. Can we talk about my beautiful incorporated Martinez and its many-sided business ventures now? This bold new vision of incorporated socialism I'm offering? Not feeling all... If it has the word incorporate in it, then I like it. I'm a money guy. Yes, if you start thinking about it like that, the socialist municipal body sort of is like a corporation, isn't it? It uses corporate law. We're incorporated. I like to think we're using the best parts of all the ideologies here, Harry. We're way past specific union members now. This is the big time. We're talking about the future of Revachol here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He loves to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. Great, Harry, great. I think we've truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. Slowly a sadness in his tone. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together. But if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. You know, I I, I gotta be honest, I I, I don't I, I don't think I think I don't I don't think he's lying. In a fucking crazy twist of events, I don't think he's lying about his ambitions. I just think he's being super illegal about them. Like I don't think he doesn't actually want to do these things. I just think his methods of doing them is the issue. Uh, I wanna go sing my karaoke song. It's time for karaoke. What the fuck? Go down there, Harry. Harry, you son of a bitch. There we go. It's really weird. He's a scumbag, but like... I don't know if he's necessarily dishonest. He's just wrapping his his honesty in this like layer of, of soot and, and confusion. 
It's like, I'm, it's like the classic, like, I'm not bribing you. I'm just holding out this dollar bill out in my hand. It would suck if someone took it. That kind of bullshit. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles. Okay, here. Okay, here. I hope. I think having extra health might be useful in the coming future. Do I have my armor on? I do. I'm just like, I should really make sure I have my armor on. I don't trust anything right now. I also don't have my leg armor, which makes me sad. All right, is it song time? I think. Hi again, Gendarm. Nope. About this hat I'm wearing. You can keep it. I don't mind. Okay. Blend in where? Bye bye, Jean. Thanks. Is it nighttime now, or is it still daytime? The stage is. You feel. So, uh, are you ready for your thing now? Let me know when I should turn on the karaoke carousel. It's not nighttime yet. No, yeah, this is still whirling in rags day. Also, I need more I need more fucking um I need more drama outfit going on. Okay. Uh drama is this tie. It's a huge drama bump. Um then we also have the this awesome jacket. And then we have this top. Oh my god, we're at plus four. What well, glasses? That was drama, but we already have that on. That's minus one drama. Rhetoric. Plus four drama. You finally made it, haven't you? People point fingers at you and whisper to each other when you pass by, what? wondering to themselves, where did that man get such a cool jacket? Did he receive it upon graduating the Econ Normale Superior de Badasserie? Is he dangerous? Damn right I'm dangerous. You are very dangerous, my friend. <laughs> dangerous and cool. In fact, no one dares to say a single thing about the jacket. But believe me, they are all very impressed. Cool. Don't I feel good about that? Hmm. Box of sunglasses. We have so many logic checks that we can do now. on these sunglasses conceptualization officer, 100% guarantee no luck oh that visor is perfect for you officer it damn it keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals bang bang and all for a mere 6 real kim our fire fight slang we should be prepared for i hope not you don't like it god damn it all right uh backyard wall Conceptualization. Oh, right. Stained glass window in the church is visual calculus. Gaston is rhetoric. You know what? I actually really want to do the stained glass window one. What was that? Wait, what was that? Uh, I just read it. Visual calculus. I just put on all the drama I could. Now I'm going to take it all off and put on visual calculus. Goddamn changing clothes takes a while but it's very important to have the for the right checks that's encyclopedia it's also encyclopedia i do not have much visual cal oh hey i do not have much visual calculus into the church i go we are going to conceptualize this big mural the mother of humanism stands above you. A precious and complex worth nothing. Damn it! it.
mirror in the whirling wind rags and then the backyard wall is also conceptualization what time is nighttime is it 1900 technically sounds about right because it needs to be dark for me to have the really good wait a minute wait a minute weren't there board games to play a small mountain of colorful board game boxes there are numerous yes wonderful choice sir a wholesome family game In your hands, you hold a brand new copy of the game, Suzerainty. It's snugly wrapped in a skin of plastic. The cover features a charming illustration depicting a mass of grinning laborers loading goods onto a ship, while a richly dressed administrator oversees their work. Shake the box. The box has a nice heft to it. You hear the rattle of individual wooden tokens and feel their weight shifting back and forth. What treasures wait in store for you? Even before you open it, you can tell that this will be a meaty game of grand strategy and complex player interactions. Okay, remove the plastic, plastic wrap. wrap. Rips off as easily as a bodice in a tawdry historical romance. There's a hiss as the lid slides off. Inside, you find a thick, full color rule book and more than a dozen pouches of various wooden components. <sighs> Savor that new <sighs> board game smell. A mix of wood, paper, and ink. Ah. A must of cardboard. It is a great smell, though. Read the rule book. Welcome to Suzerainty, a game of economic strategy for the whole family. The rule book is sumptuously illustrated and thick as a Guardian novel. Economic strategy, more like rapacious plunder and exploitation. Finally, a proper game to teach children about the importance of trade in the global economy. That is an ultra liberal statement. Money. The colorful illustrations depict S cheerful workers picking apricots, hauling marble sculptures out of crumbling temples, and harvesting a strange magenta leafed plant. Everyone is smiling. <laughs> the instructions are opaque at first and introduce many concepts you're not familiar with. Fortunately, there are many diagrams and examples throughout. You soon figure out the basic conceit. Each player represents an administrator for the suzerain of Revachon. Your objective is to increase the suzerain's wealth and renown by accumulating victory points. Fuck the suzerain. Well, my wealth and renown. There is no path to wealth. Oh, I wanted another dollar. Through the suzerain. As one of the suzerain's trusted administrators, your very function is the glorification of Revachon. That's where the Suzerain's vassals come in. The game features four vassal nations, each one home to an economically important resource. Each turn, the player collects resources from vassals where they've placed workers. They may then rearrange their workers, fulfill contracts for coin and bonuses, or build structures back in Revachon. As you leaf through the pages, your eye catches on a sidebar labeled advice for beginners i'll read the advice remember there are many paths to victory in suzerainty but successful players will find one strategy and commit to it wholeheartedly boring 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 <laughs> tear up this rule book and commit some old school atrocities <laughs> good god half light the actual scoring system appears infinitely complex with a series of tables and appendices Required to compute each player's final victory point total. You skip that part for now. You open up a number of pouches containing wooden tokens. There are also several punch boards with other cardboard components that will need to be punched out before you can play. Punch out the cardboard pieces one by one. Each cardboard token makes a satisfying as you pop it out. Soon, a neat pile of cardboard coins and counters has accumulated before you. What? You're not going to offer to let me punch any of them out? Oh, 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 do you want to play, Kim? In addition to the worker and building tokens used by each player, there are also several piles of Kim wants to play. resource tokens. I'm excited each now. Representing one of the game's four principal resources. From the Empire of Sephiroth, orange apricot tokens. From Ilmarat, 
the ancestral name of Ilmara, gray marble block tokens. From the Seminine Islands, white sacks of sugar tokens. And from Supra Muindi and Saro Maritza, magenta tokens for unprocessed cocaine leaves. Let's go cocaine again. Oh, those are nice. You hold the Hey Kim, wanna play? The lieutenant looks over the rule book before he sees something that makes his eyes go wide. Holy shit. The average playing time for this game is one to six hours. I'm not sure we can afford to set aside that kind of time for a game. So he says. But his gaze lingers a moment longer on the rule book than is strictly necessary. He could make time if he really wanted to. What is detective work? Yes! Not an elaborate game. You need logical inference, mm. attention to detail, mm. the ability to analyze your opponent's motives. Mm. Let's, mm -hmm. hmm. I do feel like my thinking has become somewhat rigid. Maybe a little diversion to keep the mind limber <laughs> is just what's in order. I would agree! See? He's doing the hard work himself. All yes. he needed was a little nudge. Uh, all right. You've convinced me. How do we play? I read the rules already. I'll show you. You explain the basic setup procedures to the lieutenant, who seems to be a quick study. You each take your bag of tokens and counters and unfold the board between you. There's no way he doesn't just, just roll like the floor with me in this game. In the center is the crown of Revachon. Radiating outward are a colorful vessels, each one supplying some raw material desired by the suzerain. Apricots from Safre, archaeological treasures from Ilmarat, sugars from the Seminine Islands, and magenta cocaine from Supra Muindi and Sara Maritza. There's also a neat little log to keep track of your progress in case you need to put the game away and return to it later. The lieutenant goes first. He draws a contract card and moves several of his workers to the Safre territory of the board and the others to the Seminine Islands. All right, Detective, your turn. You have a few options available to you. Will you try to fulfill contracts right away or rearrange your workers to maximize production on future turns? Remember what the rule book said. You will want to choose a strategy early on and stay committed to it. All right, we want to have the workers rest a little bit because I'm kind of like a late game guy. You know, I want, I want to steamroll at the end. What? It's the very beginning of the game. Your workers haven't even done any work yet. Let them rest anyway. There's no concept of rest in suzerainty. Workers have to work. <laughs> you produce a handful of archaeological treasures and a smattering of other resources. Meanwhile, the lieutenant spends two of his sugar and one of his apricot tokens to complete his contract card. He is rewarded with four coins and a round wooden token that he places in the center of the board. That's a market. It's worth two victory points. <laughs> Glowers <laughs> silently. The lieutenant returns your baleful look with a satisfied grin. The smug ass. Glancing over the board, you see several smug ass dude, just like. <laughs> Pressing more workers into service would increase your economic output and help you to survive a possible conflict with the lieutenant. Or you could ignore your labor supply and focus on fulfilling contracts for points and resources. What do you do? Fulfilling contracts. Who cares about workers or territories when the real action is in Revachon? You spend your turns fulfilling contracts for sweet coins and one-time bonuses. After several turns, you have a neat pile of cardboard coins and several units of archaeological treasure, which you trade in to build a museum. You place a cylindrical piece of wood on the river shore section in the middle of the board. It's meant to stand in for a beautifully adorned edifice filled with ancient wonders. I like the idea that, that the, the librarian and her daughter are just watching us play this game in the middle of their library. Well played, detective. That museum is worth three victory points. Now it's the lieutenant's turn to respond. He moves aggressively onto the Safari territory. Soon his workers are producing a steady supply of extremely valuable apricots. How can you let the lieutenant dominate you like that? You need to hit back. 
and hard. For several turns, you struggle to respond to the lieutenant's burgeoning apricot empire. Of course it's Eventually, apricots. You relocate the majority of your workers to Supramawindi and Saramaritsa, where they begin producing a bumper crop of cocaine tokens. You draw a new contract card. According to the text, there's an aristocrat willing to trade a large supply of cocaine for a number of coins and access to a rare oh. bonus. Oh. Amplified music worth seven victory points. Oh. oh yeah, baby. Cocaine and rock music go together like cocaine and rock music. You've reached a critical strategic juncture. How do you respond to the lieutenant's aggression? Rock and roll, baby. It takes several turns, but you slowly begin accumulating the cocaine necessary to complete the contract. Let's go. When you do, it practically rains cardboard coins on your side. Feels good, doesn't it? But you know what would feel even better. You're going to say drugs, aren't you? Drugs, specifically uppers. You should find some the first chance you get. While you daydream about speed, <laughs> the lieutenant has built himself a formidable economic engine of his own. The end game is upon you. How will you spend the vast resources you've acquired for the glory of the suzerain? Flipping through the manual, you find the most expensive structure in the game. The Revisholian victory column, worth 12 victory points. If you can successfully build it, victory would be all but assured. Alternatively, you could try launching a trade war to crush the lieutenant's economy, or you could blow all that money on a public education system for your worker tokens. I, I appreciate the, the jokes they're making here. The choice is yours. It's on, Kim. Launch a trade war. The lieutenant nods gravely as you erect tariffs against his apricots and sugar. This is going to get ugly. With every turn, tariffs are raised until neither you nor the lieutenant are producing any income or generating resources for the suzerain. Even in the best of cases, it's impossible to really win a trade war. But this is far from the best case. And the lieutenant's apricot-powered economic engine crushes yours. I knew it. Typical, typically, I'd lose by uh, from apricots for the second time. Soon, your first it was a woman. Empty, now it's Kim. Lies strewn with your worker tokens. I hope you learned your lesson. Never get involved in a trade war on insulin day. Never fuck with Kim Kitsuragi. God damn it, Kim. Now let's tell you the scores, shall we? Computing the final scores is almost a game unto itself. You each spend an inordinate amount of time making stacks of coins, consulting tables, and struggling with basic addition and multiplication. Hey, I can do that. After double, then triple checking your maths, you have your final score. Negative five victory points. You'd be lucky if the suzerain doesn't have your whole family executed for such a pitiful performance. I've got 15 points. He says with a slight smirk on his face. Don't look too glum, detective. There's always next time. Figuratively, I mean. There's no way we have time to play this game again. Now, let's clean up and get back to work. You hold the open gate. God damn it. God damn it, Kim. White morning. I guess I need to read this one. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally in a matchbox, ho matchbox house. Sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here. It's awful. A white morning. A modern death, divorce, or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him. Make him smaller, make him less you. 20% zoom out distance. All motorics learning caps raised by one. Wait. <gasps> we can go for the dance again.